Welcome to Structures Unchained, your weekly deep dive into the world's most ambitious mega projects. This week, we're in Chicago, a city built on reinvention. How does a legacy city stay relevant in a century of climate pressure, tech disruption, and global realignment? How do you rebuild transit, upgrade an airport, and create entire new neighborhoods without losing your identity? For years, O'Hare was a symbol of delay and disrepair. Now, it's becoming a test case for modern airport reinvention. The $12 plus billion O'Hare 21 program replaces the aging Terminal 2 with a sweeping new global terminal and adds two satellite concourses. The design team led by Studio Gang and SOM unifies international and domestic traffic under a soaring, light-filled roof with smart wayfinding, generous concourses, and dramatically expanded gate capacity. The first proof is real. In August 2025, crews broke ground on Concourse D, a 3,200-foot satellite with 19 gates, new lounges, and an underground tunnel connection to the main terminal complex. It's the first major concourse expansion at O'Hare in three decades and is scheduled to open in 2028. As airlines shift operations there, Terminal 2 can be demolished to make room for the global terminal, targeting the early 2030s for completion. In parallel, terminal modernizations and apron taxiway projects are already reconfiguring the airfield for more efficient flows. It also includes a second satellite concourse, often referenced as Concourse E, approximately 24 gates, new passenger baggage tunnels, and utility upgrades to support larger, more efficient aircraft operations. Funding is a blend of passenger facility charges, bonds, and airline-supported capital, with United and American as anchor stakeholders. City guidance now pegs the full modernization horizon to the early to mid-2030s, with near-term wins, gate growth, T5-T3 upgrades, de-icing and taxiway reconfigurations arriving in staggered packages before the global terminal opens. O'Hare moves approximately 80 million passengers a year and anchors America's central air network. A state-of-the-art gateway lifts the whole national system. Faster connections, fewer bottlenecks, and a U.S. hub built to compete with the best in Asia and Europe. Chicago isn't just fixing an airport, it's rebuilding a strategic asset. Head south and you see a different kind of runway. Utility crews and survey stakes tracing the Red Line's long-promised path past 95th Street. The Red Line extension, RLE, will add 5.5 to 5.6 miles of new elevated and at-grade track from 95th to 135th with four fully accessible stations, 103rd, 111th Michigan Avenue, and 131st Altkeld Gardens. Backed by a $1.9 billion federal full funding grant agreement finalized in 2025 and additional state, local dollars, the project has moved from concept to committed program, with early works advancing and full construction expected to begin in early 2026. For Roseland, West Pullman, and Riverdale, this isn't a map tweak, it's a mobility reset. The extension slashes transfers and travel time to the loop, connects residents to jobs and schools, and cements a rapid transit spine, where buses have shouldered the load for generations. The build is also a jobs engine, thousands of construction roles and long-term opportunities tied to station area reinvestment. 2025 brought political turbulence. Late year headlines flagged a temporary federal funding pause during administrative reviews of grant programs. City and state leaders responded forcefully, and the CTA reaffirmed that design, property work, and enabling contracts continue while the agency pursues restoration of obligated funds. The schedule still targets early 2026 for major construction mobilization, with completion later in the decade. Nationally, RLE is a template for equity-driven transit, federal partnership, clear outcomes, and a focus on communities historically bypassed by major infrastructure. It's Chicago making good on a decades-old promise. Now go north. The Chicago L is being rebuilt while it runs. The red and purple modernization, RPM, 
replaces century-old track structure, stations, and signals to add capacity and reliability to the system's busiest corridor. Phase 1 has delivered two transformative milestones. The red-purple bypass at Belmont, a flyover that eliminates a 113-year-old at-grade conflict, and the complete rebuild of four Red Line stations, Lawrence, Argyle, Berwyn, and Bryn Mawr. Those stations reopened in July 2025 with wider platforms, step-free access, brighter concourses, and modern materials. New foundations and track work between Belmont and Cornelia removed slow zones and prepared the corridor for more frequent, faster trains. With the bottleneck resolved, peak capacity can rise by thousands of riders per hour while dwell and delay times fall. Phase 2 planning is already scoping further north side upgrades toward Howard, including additional structure renewals, traction power, and accessibility packages. America's big city transit systems are aging in place. RPM shows how to modernize without shutting down, through careful staging, temporary tracks, and relentless focus on safety and accessibility. It's not flashy, it just works. Where a rail yard once walled off the South Branch, 62 acres are being stitched into the city as Chicago's 78th neighborhood. The 78 is a multi-phase riverfront district planned for roughly 13 million square feet of offices, housing, labs, retail, culture, and 12 acres of parks and riverwalk. Street grids are being extended, utilities run, and the Wells-Wentworth connector now links the loop to Chinatown straight through the site. In 2025, the City Council approved a privately funded Chicago Fire FC Stadium within the 78, a catalytic anchor for entertainment and year-round activity, with complementary mixed uses planned around it. Earlier city plans committed public funding for major infrastructure in and around the site. Mid-2025 updates shifted the previously proposed Red Line Station at 15th and Clark off the near-term slate while other mobility pieces, bikeways, river taxi access, and improved bus links continue to advance. A metro realignment package and river wall works are also staged to unlock initial parcels. The development team is sequencing vertical construction to start as infrastructure packages are delivered, with first buildings targeting starts in 2026 pending market conditions. The 78 is urban infill at mega project scale recycling land inside the core, adding jobs and homes next to transit, and reconnecting neighborhoods long split by rail and road. Cities nationwide are watching how Chicago converts an industrial void into a 24-7 district. Chicago isn't chasing glory, it's bracing for the future. In a world of rising risks and shrinking timelines, these mega projects aren't just upgrades, they're insurance policies against climate, against inequality, against irrelevance. It's not about catching up, it's about not falling behind. Subscribe, we want you to come back weekly for more. Next week, we explore Seoul, where future-proofing isn't theory, it's muscle memory.